Hey, what up, y'all? It's uh, I Am Legend, back from a long hiatus. But I uh, just wanted to make this video. So I got some questions regarding how I was knocking out the Mutt Master. So here's what you need. We'll jump right into it. Uh, defensive playbook with a 3-4 in it. Um, I'm running with the hybrid defensive playbook right now with the Patriots. And you need a Panthers offensive playbook because of the Wildcat. And because of the Panthers, they're awesome. But, uh... <laughs> um, and here you see... Uh, where I was with my Mutt Master objectives a few days ago uh, when I spliced these clips up. I've actually knocked out a couple more now, so I have them up to an 86 overall. Um, probably would already have them uh, up to 88 had I not like stepped aside to put the clips together. But um, So I got them up to an 86. All I have left is 40,000 passing yards, 150 passing touchdowns, and the daily objective list. Uh, that's all I got left. Um, and I'll have him to a 90 and, and a 92 and 95 uh, at that point. So pretty much done with him. As far as the solos that you'll uh, use for this, it doesn't really matter, man. Like, uh, only thing that matters is you want arcade and not simulation uh, as far as the play style. Um, difficulty, you would always prefer rookie, but pro's not too rough. Like, you can, you can knock those out too. I knocked all my objectives out just playing grinding out the journey and all those solos so I didn't avoid any solos in the process and I still knocked out these objectives so all that matters is the method you use in doing it and I'll show you that but I'll also show you some easier solos here now alright so as far as the solos as you see here one of the ones I used a lot uh, especially for offensive stats chasing was the uh, Cowboys and that Dolphins one to the right of that in the training camp solos also for passing I used this one in mutt levels I used Titan size problems in the AFC South one <coughs> excuse me um, so I use those a lot for the passing stats I mean you and you're obviously gonna get defensive stuff in there too but um, also uh, I recommend like these ones towards the bottom of journey they have a lot of um, you just go through them, but honestly, I didn't use any particular one solo, but I'm just showing you some of the ones that I, when I was really getting down to it, needed a few final stats I knew I had to focus on, I'd go to these. And this is in the still using training wheels section of the Team Diamond solos. I used the uh, Seahawks sharpening their talons one for sacks mainly. Alright, so the first objective we'll focus on is fumbles. Um, this one is super, super easy and the quickest one to knock out. And you don't have to do the objectives in this particular order, um, but it pretty much is how I did it. I pursued the defensive ones first and the offense I just uh, ended up doing after, so, after that. But Alright, so number one for this fumbles objective, the number one thing you want to do is go to your depth chart you can either do it in the game but I recommend doing it from the lineup screen on the main mutt menu and go to your fourth cornerback and you're gonna wanna put in your fastest guy with the highest hit power uh, from your secondary so for me day one I had pulled Jamal Adams so I just used him and how easy this objective is to achieve um, obviously I made lineup upgrades since day one but I never had to change Jamal Adams once I put him at that spot because I had already knocked out the objective with him before I upgraded uh, with a better player so I, I never it I knocked it out so fast I never needed to upgrade him so he's a 81 overall a guy like that probably even some golds like you could put in there depending on where you're at in the game and a uh, high hit power high speed relatively and you can just knock this out he's got 85 speed and 86 hit power so um, you just want to make sure you have that guy there and the other guy that will factor in here is also your backup free safety but mainly just that fourth cornerback so what you want to do is you're going to pick kickoff right you want to make sure it's kickoff right and not left because on the right is where you have your fourth corner and the backup free safety is the gunners and you're kicking to like generally it's the fullback that's receiving it uh, but if you did it to the left there's a it's either you're gonna be like a tight end or a wide receiver usually a more skilled guy that can make you miss and you got a wide receiver gunning on that side so you definitely don't ever wanna 
You want to avoid left at all costs. You just want to go with kickoff right here. So um, here we go. Go ahead and kick off right. All right, so what you're going to do here is, uh, number one, you pick the sky kick option. Do you want it to go as high as possible? And then the other key to this is all you're going to do is press X once to start the kick meter, allow the kick meter to go all the way up, and then when it comes back down, then you hit X. We're used to trying to hit X on the way up. You don't want to do that. Let it go all the way up and then come back down and then hit X, which causes that short kick effect there. And then as you saw, this is proof is in the pudding. Even the kicker, the kicker was so hyped at the success rate of this method that he he tried to pick that. He he knew what was going to happen. Sprinted over there to try to get him a touchdown. Try to get his shine on. But uh, that's how that's how high of a success rate it is. So um, yeah, I mean it's real simple. Um, that's why I put it first uh, on this video for all the objectives because. It was the easiest. Like it's so easy. I it was the first one I knocked out because all you're doing, uh, wash, rinse, repeat, is uh, you score, you kick it off, you're knocking the ball out, you score again, kick it off, knock the ball out, just over and over again. Um, and sometimes they'll muff it like that, but like I said, it's the I, and I included that to show you, but that's rare. Like again, the I don't I don't know. I, I put like the success rate of knocking it out as 95 percent but the key is as you see up in the corner some of the solos i showed you there all the solos i showed you you want to use here have arcade mode anyone that's simulation or uh yeah just anyone that's not arcade you don't want to do those because you're not going to knock the ball out like this so that's the key um as far as interceptions um, what I did was I wanted to take the guesswork out of it because early on a lot of the solos I was playing um, You couldn't tell if the computer if the AI was going to run or pass So what I would do the method I developed was I would call the squeeze block from a punt and uh, Then the computer will audible to a pass play and then what I would do is take control of the corner in the flat as you see here is Rod Woodson and then I'd play the flat on the pat. I knew it was going to be a pass. And then I'd play that flat. I'd bait the, the AI into throwing it there. Um, so as far as um, I slowed it down here to show you exactly uh, what I picked. You're going to punt block even 44. Um, and you're subbing out the returner for your cornerback that's going to play the flat. You're subbing the right gunner. You want to put in uh, safety at the right gunner, and then the left corner. I mean, the left gunner. You want your other best cover corner, and then you pick squeeze block. And like I said, once you pick squeeze block, you're making the computer pass. They're, if they're whether they're in a run or a pass, they're going to pass at this point. But you're going to wait for them to audible it, as he did there. Then you audible to your cover two, and that's how you force their hand you're gonna force them to pass and play that flat and uh, more often than not you're gonna you're gonna have a high success rate with this as well also I wanted to show you here I slowed this down a little bit to show you um, another thing you can do that you can play around with here uh, as far as sacks or pressure is when you audible to the cover two and again make sure you have a three four playbook for this as you saw when I first called it the guy, uh, James, underneath me was actually in coverage. But I flipped it because if uh, if you flip it, you can make that guy underneath Woodson, uh, underneath your corner playing the flat, you can make him a rusher. So as you see right here, same thing. He was in coverage, but I just flipped the play. And what you can do is actually move him out. I didn't do it on this play, but he can create pressure from the corner. So it's just another little thing you can mess with, but um, that's the method. Like again, you're just calling squeeze block, wait for them to audible, then you audible to the cover two, and then you're playing the flat with the corner. And like I said, once you see his arm move, you 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 want to give him a second to think that that receiver to the far right is open. And once his arm moves, bam, jump the route. All right, and as an added bonus here, if you're just wanting to get picks with Shazier. Um, you can do this. Um, this first play is kind of irrelevant, but um, 
basically the the setup for this is you in any solo if you're up uh with less they they won't start throwing a hail mary or attempt a hail mary until 20 seconds or less and what you're looking for is on the play call screen that they come out with four wide receivers and you're looking for the trips where you have three wide receivers lined up on the same side um and that's when you know like you know it'll, you know it's a hail mary in general when there's 20 seconds or less they're down and they come out with four wide receivers um and so it, actually you see here they didn't throw the hail mary that last one i believe they came out with three wide receivers sometimes they'll even come out with four and just run streaks it's not a hail mary and you can't really predict that because they have two wide receivers on each side in that scenario but in this case as you see they're coming out with the three wide receiver trips to the side so you know it's the hail mary what i do is blitz the safety in the deep zone um, so that he's not back there to interfere with it and then i try to run stride for stride with them i found it easier that way to do it both for deflections and to get picks because um, i was doing this last year uh, for the method but the main thing is you just want to call a man coverage blitz the deep zone the safeties and then just run with the receivers and go for the pick because you know you know where they're going to th they're always going to throw to the three wide receiver side so that's a easy way to get picks with Shazier um, I, you won't get a ton of yardage on returns in general with those but but if you're just wanting the picks that's the uh, easiest way to go about it if you're wanting yardage you're going to have to do a little usering I actually included a clip at the end of this to show you like the majority of the return yardage I got with Shazier was by playing uh, I was playing like cover threes where the middle of the field was split by two linebackers that way I just had to worry about one side and then I'd kind of bait the AI there but um, yeah that, I mean that's the but that is the easiest way to get picks and deflections for his mutt master stats is play for the Hail Mary and uh, run with the receivers for sacks uh, I'm running 245 uh, nickel and as you can see the key for me in getting the sacks is if you can get that jump I, I always played the middle with Shazier um, just so in case I was able to get the sack but a lot of times it's not even you that will get the sack if you get a push up the middle fast enough uh, the outside guys will also close in so and as you can see if you're if you don't want to keep trying the punt squeeze block method for interceptions I just told you about um, another thing with this is if you are getting enough pressure if you run the two four five mid blitz out of the nickel as I'm doing here uh, you're going to get you're, you're going to get picks too like it's a, another benefit of it but the issue is you can't always determine what the computer what the AI is going to do so sometimes I'm showing you the highlights here to save time um, again well as you can see again the pressure makes a difference um, and Matt got the pick right there but um a lot of times like or not a lot of times but sometimes the computer might get in a rhythm when you're rushing with the mid blitz uh, you're leaving everybody on an island so sometimes they might start if they're running like little dink and dunk uh, little drags and slants and small in routes short in routes and, and things like that sometimes they might just start dotting you up but again that that's the way to guarantee the highest success rate for passing it's easy all I've done when I played the solos against the computer all I've done for pr basically the last two years is I call a run out of a three wide receiver set and then I audible two verts and let the best man win uh, whatever whatever guy gets beats his man look at your matchups when you come out their speed as you see whatever you got the advantage and uh, just throw it to the guy that beats his man so yeah very simple concept just chucking it to the guy that beats his man and uh, again I would recommend rookie uh, any any solos with the rookie difficulty or the easiest because you're the corners are going to be a lot less uh, athletic there uh, for rushing as you can see here for all your rushing objectives you go to the wildcat formation again out of that Panthers playbook 
and you're picking the power play. And that's all you're doing. Um, this is the play I used to knock out all of my rushing objectives. You're not gonna knock it. You're you're not gonna hit a home run every time you call it. In fact, a lot of times there m might be a little bit of resistance there. But again, this is the play that gives you the highest success rate. So uh, very simple. There you have it. Um, for uh, this is just a little clip of me using it with Shazier here. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to put this out there for those of y'all that were asking how I did it so quickly. Um, here, there you have it. These are the methods I used, uh, and so hopefully you don't. You can do them in whatever order you want to. But what I recommend is just focus on two stats at a time. Um, and if you did, as I started the video with the fumbles, if you knock those fumbles out quickly with that kickoff method, then you can focus on everything else. So that way, when you're on defense, you don't gotta. You don't got to be scatterbrained and think like, oh, well, I want to pick, but I, I want to get sacks. I want to knock the ball loose when I sack him. No, you, you don't need to knock the ball loose anymore. You can go for the sacks. You can go for the picks, whatever you want to do. Um, but I recommend just focusing on two stats at a time. And once you knock those out, on to the next two that you have the highest stat, uh, the highest stat number in. Um, so if you already got some interceptions, go ahead and finish those out. Um, and I always like to really focus on one stat defensively and one offensively and then just knock those out as quickly as possible and move on to the next one. Um, so hopefully that simplifies it using the methods that I've laid out here. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, you can like, subscribe, comment. Um, that's always appreciated, but mainly just wanted to put this out there. Uh, hope, hopefully it helps some of you. Uh, quite a few of you, and that's the main objective. So I hope you enjoyed it. hope it helps, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.